Suzuki wants to be known for more than just small cars and SUVs. Here the company has come up with a seriously sporting saloon, the Kazashi, unique in its provision of all-wheel drive, or you can ask for equipment levels and an all-pleasing sharply styled saloon shape for not much more than £20,000. It'll be a rare choice but claims to be a very satisfying one. I learnt a new Japanese word last week, Kizashi. It means a sign of great things to come and it's an appropriate moniker for a car designed to show exactly what its aspiring maker can do. We're talking of this model, the Suzuki Kizashi, the brand's first three-box family saloon and a key part of its ongoing agenda in cementing an already well-established position as one of the world's top 10 automakers. Suzuki claim that this car is aimed at the D segment where Mondeos and Signias and Passats rule the roost. Actually, it's a little smaller than that, more the size of something like a Volkswagen Jetta or a Volvo S40. And it comes with three strong selling points that set it apart in this congested marketplace. First, it looks great, no, no question about that. Second, it comes with standard four-wheel drive, rare in this sector at a reasonable price point and highly desirable for grippier performance and winter peace of mind. And third, you get leather-lined equipment levels running to almost everything you could possibly want. All tempting selling points that this Kizashi will need given its lack of diesel power in a segment that virtually demands it. At launch, its appeal was rendered more individual still by restricting early customers to a CVT automatic gearbox. It's out of the ordinary, in other words, aimed at a mainly private group of buyers seeking exactly that. Whether they'll like what they find in this smartly styled Suzuki is what we're here to find out. Now, somewhere inside this car is a cracking little sports saloon trying to get out. I know that because I've tried a pre-UK production version of this model with a five-speed manual gearbox, and it was a package I liked very much. But the UK importers decided to launch this car with the CVT automatic gearbox I'm trying now, which rather takes the edge off this Suzuki's assertive personality. Still, it compensates with a more relaxed demeanour should you be content, as many older buyers will be, to cruise around uh, on half throttle in no particular hurry in this good-looking fast four-door. It seems to be for these kinds of buyers that the slightly over-assisted power steering was also developed. Now, there's only one engine choice, a 2.4-litre petrol engine borrowed from the Gran Vitara SUV and boosted to 178 brake horsepower with 230 newton metres of torque. That's a useful amount of pulling power. It's good enough to uh, take this uh, little saloon from rest to 60 in eight and a half seconds on the way to a top speed of 127 miles an hour. Yes, there are plenty of petrol-powered medium-range saloons that could match that in the dry. But of course, a significant number of days a year in this country aren't dry at all. In fact, many of them are ready to scare you with black ice and even snow. And in these kinds of conditions, uh, most other £22,000 uh, saloons will be all over the place. But in this Kazashi, all you have to do is reach over to the right-hand side of the fascia here and press this inconspicuous little AWD button then sail on past the slithering masses. Yes, I know you could also have that kind of option were you to spend a similar amount of money on a small SUV or a Qashqai-like crossover, but then you wouldn't be able to enjoy the taut, agile handling of this responsive sports saloon. Power into a bend, uh, a really tight bend with a crossover or a small SUV and it just wants to understeer straight on. Uh, flip down a couple of ratios with the steering mounted gear shift paddles in this Kazashi though and turn into a tight bend and the car digs in, holds on and just powers round it. Body roll is much uh, more controlled too and there's great lateral support from the standard sports seats. All of which means that if you do enjoy your driving, yet live somewhere where seasonal periods would make four-wheel drive an advantage, this Kazashi is an affordable and engaging prospect. 
The drive setup in question is IAWD, Suzuki's intelligent all-wheel drive system, which thanks to a potential 50-50 torque split is able to send equal amounts of power to all four wheels should the conditions demand it. Once you're back on dry tarmac, a further prod of this AWD button returns the car to two-wheel drive, which of course is the setup you're going to want uh, for driving on the highway. And that's an environment in which this Kazashi can sometimes feel a little noisy. But there is the peace of mind of a really superb set of brakes provided by Akabono, the company that equips Japan's 275 mile an hour bullet train. Beauty may be in the eye of the beholder and all that, but I've certainly not found any beholders who see this Suzuki as being anything other than a very handsome piece of vehicle design. The muscular bulging wheel arches combine with a classic long bonnet, a stub-tailed silhouette and an aggressively rising belt line. Now, we only get the sport trim model here in the UK, which is nice because it means that the whole effect is set off uh, with body side sill extensions, lower body side mouldings with chrome accents and custom lightweight 18 inch alloy wheels. I love the sculpted exhausts too, they're stainless steel covers reflecting inspiration from Suzuki's motorcycle designs. All of which, smart as it is, will be unlikely to distract your attention from the fact that this isn't quite the uh, Mondeo sized D segment shaped model promised by Suzuki's publicity material. Instead, think Volkswagen Jetta, uh, say at Exio or Volvo S40, and you'll be closer to the mark. All smartly styled four doors that, like this one, sit somewhere between a, a Focus or Astra sized family hatch and a Mondeo or Vauxhall Insignia style medium range model, which will be an ideal shape for many buyers, most of whom will be very happy with what they find inside. In the leather-lined cabin, Suzuki's designers have been broadly successful in achieving the atmosphere of understated quality they were clearly trying to create. All right, so you wouldn't mistake this interior for that of an Audi or a Mercedes, but it has a nicely textured soft touch dashboard enlivened with chrome accents and everything falls to hand and functions in a way that suggests quality and build integrity. Uh, storage is provided by this uh, double layered compartment in the center console and uh, this useful compartment just in front of the gear stick which houses uh, the USB port and a 12 volt power socket. The glass sunroof can give the cabin an area feel uh, though will rob taller drivers of a little bit of total headroom but few will complain about the leather stitched three spoke sports steering wheel which of course adjusts for reach and rake and combines with a height adjustable driver's seat to mean that just about anyone could find the ideal driving position. Now uh, the instrumentation is taken care of by two cylindrical shaped meters with uh, an information display between them that uh, displays instantaneous and average fuel consumption, range and average speed. It's in the rear that you most notice how this car is up to 200 millimeters shorter than some other D segment models like Ford's Mondeo. So legroom won't be too plentiful if you've got two very large adults up front. Having said that, the accommodation provided back here is uh, really not much worse than say a Vauxhall Insignia or a Peugeot 508. As with those cars, two adults will be quite comfortable back here. Uh, three might be a little bit of a squash. Out back, you'll find a boot that's bigger than it looks, 461 litres in size. And if that's not enough, there's a ski hatch through which larger, longer items can be poked through. And as usual in this class, you can push forward the 60-40 split folding rear backrest and free up a lot more space. Now, there's a natural inclination, isn't there, to take a sharp intake of breath at the thought of a Suzuki costing £22,000 or more. But you had to take account of the fact that all-wheel drive, an automatic gearbox, a vast equipment tally and upmarket sporty trim are all included in the price. 
And in an era where a diesel Honda Civic can be £25,000, you also need to bear in mind how prices of less sophisticated cars have risen in recent times. As for rivals, well, you could very well argue that this Kazashi doesn't have any direct ones. Those uh, sporty saloons that are of a similar size, power output and price uh, aren't offered with four-wheel drive. While medium range and compact executive four-door models that can be all-wheel driven are slightly bigger and a lot more expensive. Now let's start with the first category. Two-wheel drive sporty saloons of a similar size. Now this Suzuki is priced almost identically to a Volkswagen Jetta 1.4 TSI Sport 160 PS, uh, a car that's slightly faster and more frugal but lacks not only four-wheel drive but an auto gearbox even as an option. It's also far less well equipped than this Kizashi. Now something like a Volvo S40 2.0-litre R design could match this Suzuki's equipment tally, but again it's two-wheel drive. And if you're going to spend £20,000 on something like that, I think you'd do better to opt for uh, uh, something comparable with a bit more poke, like a 200 PS Skoda Octavia VRS. But I reckon that one of the main reasons that people might be considering this car in the first place will be because it's all-wheel driven. And if that's a non-negotiable feature for you, then this car's value proposition is going to look very good indeed. Now, I'm assuming that because we're talking about a sports saloon here, then we can discount more ponderous Qashqai-like crossovers and small SUVs. By the same token, uh, we also really can't consider apparently comparable models like a, a Skoda Octavia or a Subaru Legacy because uh, those brands only offer all-wheel drive with a frumpier estate body style. What about a medium-sized Mondeo sector model with a 4x4 drivetrain then? Well, only Vauxhall offers one of those and the least expensive all-wheel drive version of their Insignia comes only with a feebler diesel engine, a manual gearbox, much less equipment, and to add insult to injury, costs nearly £3,000 more. Mind you, even that car looks good value uh, against the only other possible alternative, an all-wheel drive version of a compact executive saloon, something like uh, an Audi A4 2.0-litre TFSI Quattro, or a BMW 3 Series X-Drive. You'd need a budget of around £30,000 for one of those. So let's say you've been through the comparison process and reached the conclusion that this Kazashi is rather unique in its market. What can you expect to find included once you've signed the cheque for a car like the 2.4 litre petrol auto model that I've been trying here? Well, it's only imported into the UK in upmarket sport guides, which accounts for the dynamic look with its side sill extensions, custom lightweight 18-inch alloy wheels and leather-covered sports steering wheel. Other key features include leather for the gear shift surround and for the heated, electrically adjustable sports seats. You've got an 8-speaker uh, MP3 WMA compatible CD stereo with steering wheel controls and a USB port, dual zone air conditioning, uh, then keyless entry and start, uh, a trip computer, cruise control, all round electric windows, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, uh, rear privacy glass, front fog lights, auto headlamps and electrically heated and folding mirrors. All that's really missing is satellite navigation and you can have that as a dealer fit option. Safety is reasonably covered too with a seven airbag tally that includes a driver's knee bag. Plus there are Isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. Now, if this issue is of prime importance to you, then you're probably not going to be even considering a Kazashi in the first place, lacking as it does uh, diesel power, fancy start-stop technology, and almost all of the other efficiency fads currently in vogue in the medium-range marketplace. Still, a combined cycle fuel reading of 34 miles to the gallon might be too ruinous if you're not going to be covering huge mileages, though if you are, uh, your range is going to be a bit restricted from the 63 litre fuel tank. 
uh, the CO2 emissions reading of 191 grams per kilometre uh, does seem quite high, though uh, actually if you start to look at it, it's actually not much more um, than uh, you'd get from petrol automatic models uh, with only two-wheel drive in the medium range marketplace. Service intervals are every 9,000 miles and there's a three-year 60,000 mile warranty and a 12-year anti-perforation warranty. Insurance is quite high at Group 26 and residual values remain a bit of an unknown, this being Suzuki's first foray into this part of the market. But against all of that, you've got to uh, factor in the necessity to pay for the kind of all-wheel drive system that you'll be thankful for in the winter months, especially as here it comes mated to uh, petrol power, something that some buyers will prefer. And um, bear in mind too that uh, a petrol cash car-like crossover model with an automatic gearbox would cost you just as much to run and would be a lot less fun to drive. If the Kazashi is indeed a statement of Suzuki's capability, then consider me convinced. It's a genuinely good car, and one that will make many people think very differently about this innovative Japanese brand. Whether many of them will buy it, of course, is a different matter. There are, after all, only a limited number of people in the market to purchase a pokey, petrol-powered, 180 brake horsepower sports saloon with four-wheel drive, particularly when it comes fitted with the CVT Auto gearbox that we've been testing here. But if you're looking for an uncommonly comfortable and capable car that can shrug off all weathers and won't be too pricey to run for low mileage users, then go on, try a Kazashi. You can be sure your neighbours won't. <laughs>